Hi guys. So I got this package in the uh, in the mail today, and um, it's a package that I ordered uh, maybe a week ago, um, and it's another package from um, GMC Luthier Tools in the UK. Um, and as some of you know, uh, I did a video um, maybe three weeks back or something like that. Um, an unboxing video um, on a fret press that I bought and that particular fret press um, was included in a fret tooling package as that particular package was uh, called and uh, I got the fret press, I got a fret puller um, some um, fingerboard radius templates and stuff like that a fret bender too, basically just to to get going with refretting a guitar um, and that particular fret press was only to be used on um, on uh, bolt on necks um, or any neck that can be removed from the guitar body so um, yeah there were all kinds of good stuff in that package and um, at a reasonable price so I had to try that out and um, since that I've been very happy with the uh, with the purchase so I went to the website again and um, I had my eyes on a couple of different things. Um, another fret press for guitars with set necks, um, glued in necks, neck throughs, everything like that, um, which was a specialized uh, fret press for that particular type of guitar. Um, and again, at a reasonable price. Um, so I had to buy that because I have some guitars coming up, Les Pauls and guitars like that, uh, that is in need of a fret, uh, com complete refret. So that's just going to make my job a lot easier. And um, along with that I bought some, um, some different things. I bought a sanding beam, um, fret leveling sanding beam, and a fretboard slotting jig, and I believe a nut profiling jig. Uh, it was also a package where you get everything for shaping, cutting, string spacing on your nuts and uh, when you make them from scratch um, out of your favorite material. And um, yeah, so this package just came in today. And um, I just thought like last time that I would do an unboxing right on the spot. So um, here we go guys. Um, um, I'm quite excited to see what, what these things are are going to feel and look like. So, let's just see if I can get into it here. And this right here is very, very, very sturdy packed. Um, Nothing cheap or flimsy about this, so you can basically order the stuff without hesitation because you know it will arrive at your doorstep um, in excellent condition. So no worries there. I believe this. All right. I think I got it. I have to flip it around.
Okay, this looks right. <laughs> a lot of protection. And here are a couple of different things. Oh, that's neat. We'll just get everything out of the everything out of the of the package. So, let's just get this box out of the way. And as with any product that you buy from GMC Luthier Tools, um, you'll actually get the manuals to the different types of, um, of products that you buy. So that's just really neat because you need some, you need some uh, information on how to set up your fret press exactly and, and basically just anything like that. So, that's a handy thing to to be handed. Okay, so let's take a look at the first thing here, guys. And this is the fretboard slotting uh, jig, because I plan on building a um, a Telecaster um, this summer. So I bought a um, fretboard slotting jig just to make that process um, go a little faster and to make it a little more precise instead of just cutting it by hand. Um, not that you couldn't do that, but it just requires a lot more skill and uh, uh, precision. So let's see what we got here. Okay. Let's see what we got. Okay. And again, you get some get the instructions and then you get uh, an extra knife blade for the actual saw itself uh, some screws to mount the uh, the scale template and an uh, allen key to um, to seat it all nicely making sure that it's nice and tight and this right here I believe Yeah, all right. So this right here is the actual uh, fret slotting saw itself. And um, there are a couple of blades here, I believe, what, five blades or something? So you can, you can change them and um, make sure that they're always sharp, doing the best they can. So, um, that's really nice. A nice little wooden handle here. Smells smells quite good, the wood. And um, has a nice little stripe to it right there. Um, yeah, looks really good. Some kind of time stamp or number stamp. Um, great. I'll have to check that out. And um, here on the other side, this is the actual jig itself um, with screws on the side here 
or inserts for screws on the side so you can you can mount the um, the scale templates and those are on both sides um, with rubber feet on the bottom um, nice piece of chunky wood here and uh, some form of rubber here to to make the fretboard kind of uh, sit a little sturdier when you mount it. Okay, so here you can actually see the template itself for the for the uh, the fret slot to fit into, um, and uh, then you have the scale length here on the other side. So you have to mount those two to make the very fine edge of the blade actually go into to the fine uh, fine cuts here making that uh, fret slot uh, dead center, which is very important when you're doing fret work. And um, yeah, it just says here on the on that little sticker that make sure to read the instructions before you go ahead. And um, of course that has something to do with you have to set these up uh, so they're aligned correctly and you cut your fret slots correctly. So, very nice. Um, I'm looking forward to to see this thing in action here and uh, I'll see if I can't make a video um, showing you guys some of it here and this is just the saw again here you can see it it fits nicely inside the pocket here and the blade is just as thick as the the uh, line for the fret itself so it, it would just fall nicely in there and making sure that by having both sides on here you'll always get a um, precise result because the blade is going in on one side and locked again at the other side with the other template just making sure that you're not slipping cutting unevenly so that's really nice really handy um, yeah let's just put that aside Let's see what's what else we got here. Yeah, okay, so this is just this is not the blade. This is just an extra insert for the um, for the uh, the saw up here. Basically just maybe a shorter one. So great, great, great. Alright. What can this be? Oh, alright. <laughs> Actually looked looked a little bigger on the um, on the website but uh, doesn't make any difference this is the uh, blue sapphire fret leveling tool and again it comes with a manual so again just nice to catch up on instructions and basically see what um, what you can do with this and here we have different kinds of uh, sandpaper abrasive grits um, to um, to stick on the um, the leveling tool itself, and um, I'll just show you how to mount it on the tool. So as you see here, we actually have we have what? Let's see here. We have 100 and 150 grit right here, and uh, on the other we have 220. And on the last one we have, let's see, what do we have? I don't even know, it just says zero, 0, so that might be 400 I believe. It feels like 400. Um, so depending on how aggressively you're going to, to perform your fret level, um, you can decide or change the grids that you're using. Uh, normally, I don't really, I've, I've never used 150 grid, um, unless it's it's a guitar with um, 
with a lot of high frets needing extra attention. Um, I mostly start out with 220, 240, even uh, 322, um, and then just go over it uh, one last time with 400 grits just to take out the scratches. But great, we have some different uh, pieces of paper to, uh, to choose from. That's great. Um, and this is not sticky paper, by the way. It's just basic um, abrasive papers, so there's no um, tape to peel off and just stick it to um, to the file itself. This um, is actually rather handy because let me just show you. This is the file itself here. Nice little wooden file here with a flat ground metal surface here. And as you see those two those two uh, holes here or mounting places are for the um, for the sanding strips. So you cut them to uh, roughly the same length and width and then you just stick it in here and with these screws here you tighten it all down making sure that the sandpaper um, are not moving when you file back and forth. And I believe this is about, this is about what? Let's see right here. Yeah, it's roughly 25, 25 centimeters of sanding surface. So that's great. Um, normally I use a longer sanding beam um, to cover the whole fretboard. And um, that works just as well. But having a... Um, a sanding beam a little shorter than that uh, is going to make it easier for concentrating in one area. Uh, of course, not concentrating too much, but being able to get into a few tighter spots. And uh, this is also going to be quite handy when I go and do the fall away on the guitars, um, just creating that little bit of extra angle from the 12th fret down to the last fret, making the strings vibrate or oscillate easier. Um, also not causing uh, bends or stuff like that to fret out or uh, basically just note out um, especially on Fender guitars with a um, seven and a quarter or nine and a half inch radius creating that fall away just makes that difference um, so this is going to be great for that and um, right here I believe I just have yeah okay so you can you can take this off, put it in, and tighten the screws in to make it um, to make it sit uh, tight here. And then you basically you're going to put this piece of of thin metal here. You're going to put that over to make sure that the sandpaper is being held in place. So that's kind of neat. No glue, no uh, sticky residue, anything like that. And just the Allen wrench here to tighten it all up. So that's going to ensure a uh, a neat and very nice fit. So that's um, that's really nice. I like that. I like that a lot. And it just, I believe this is what two and a half centimeters or something like that. No, two centimeters actually. The width here is two centimeters, and it just it feels nice. I guess with that little bevel right here, you're supposed to hold it like this and just go back and forth. You can turn it around and just make your palm fit nicely in there just make it all more comfortable um, but great nice tool um, and um, yeah shouldn't be no problem with this one so great another great tool here um, yeah so let's just stick that right there I'm just going to put it down here for a while just like that all right So, let's just see what this is right here. Hmm, it doesn't say anything on it. This is what... Oh, okay, this is the... Um, uh, I believe this is for... For the... Um, 
it's another little cutting tool. I believe this is for the um, the knot profiling jig that I bought. Um, yeah, it was just in a separate envelope. So I'll just stick it right here, put it over to the side. Then we're going to take a look at this little box here, which I believe is the um, is the fret tooling package. So let's see how that looks. Oh, and this is nice. This was something that I liked very much uh, being in that um, not tooling package because this right here is nice and laminated. Um, this is instructions for finger, fingerboard radius gauges. And I have a couple of those. I have understring radius gauges and uh, overstring radius gauges, if you like to call it that. But these here are really nice. I don't know if you can see that, but these are held in place out here and you can slide them under um, on the fretboard and that's just it's a nice thing to include in that package um, it's a set of eight pieces with uh, seven and a quarter nine and a half ten twelve fourteen sixteen seventeen and twenty radii um, and I can basically basically with the strings on I can easily fit this fit this under the strings and without even having to take the strings out or scratch the fretboard using the understring radius gauges which is a little bit of a hassle to get under the strings uh, when they're at pitch full tension um, and the action is set low so I believe this is going to enable me to to get under there even without adjusting the strings or anything just to just to basically basically see what freight uh, radius the fretboard is and also actually now that I think about it is also going to enable me to set the um, the radius or at least match the, the strings to the radius by placing it under um, at least so that they're not resting on that um, great let's just see what we have here oh and that's neat that's very neat very neat just a, a bolt here um, with a locking washer here so they're not going to go apart and um, it's just written on the written on the sides here you can see seven and a quarter nine and a half ten twelve fourteen and so on um, that's just going to, that's going to be great a lot of easy work to be done there so just and of course that's why it also has the the curve on the top here because as you can see it has the curve under to to match or measure the, the fretboard radius and also have a radius on the on the top here so as I said you can actually go in and set the strings to match the radius um, to either a radius that you like or something close to what the fretboard matches so again another great little piece of tool here that it's going to come in handy when I do setups. So it was nice to see that um, included in that package too. So um, I like that. Let's just put that aside over here and let's take a look at what else we have. Um, Okay, so this right here, I believe, is the um, is the knot templates to um, to use when you're when you're going to shape in a knot. For example, if you have a fender with a seven and a quarter inch um, fret slot um, radius into it, then you'll have to go in and match that bottom of the knot or the curve of the top of the nut to match that seven and a quarter. So you can do that with those and they just they go up and down. So nine and a half and ten and remaining we have we have uh, 12, 14 and 16 and we have 17, 20 and zero. So basically just dead flat on that side. Um, I guess that's for classical guitars or yeah something close to that. So that's great and basically those are to be mounted in a um, in a jig, of course, to to give the uh, the best fit here. 
So I'm just going to put them in here again and put them over here. And then we're just going to take a look at what else we have in this package. Yeah, of course we have another set of of the the gauges or the radius because we need one on both sides if we're basically shaping the knot both front and back. So another great little thing to have, making sure that we can get as close and as precise to the um, to the actually radius that we want the knot to have. Um, And here we have a, another set of, of uh, gauges with radius on it. And I believe that this is actually for um, fret work. You can use it for that too, but I, I probably have to read the manual for that. But another set that you can attach to the jig itself. So really nice. And this right here, oh, that's <laughs> that's actually neat. You get a little a little saw here. Um, yeah, I guess that's that's your basic starting point for cutting the um, the first uh, little groove for the string to sit when you do the nut setup. And I believe this is this must be a, about ten thou, I believe. Um, let me just get a a feeler gauge to check that. So I just got a 10 thou feeler gauge right here and I'm just going to check if I believe it's roughly the same size. Yeah, and it is. So this, I actually didn't know that this was included in here too, but this is a nice little piece because it only files when you when you stroke it on the on the backward angle. So it's not going to slip or anything like that. So a nice, neat little tool here. Um, that's going to come in handy for sure. And then here we have, um, I don't know, I believe this is the string spacing for the um, for that setup. I'm not quite sure. Um, again, I have to read the manual, but I guess it's something for that. Um, but I have to see about that. Um, and this right here is the actual jig itself. Um, Here you can you can actually see what this is all about. Um, this is where you would mount the nut inside here, and you would insert the the gauges that you uh, the radius gauges that you would want to match the nut at. And this is actually um, you can down here at the bottom you can you can make this slide down so you can actually measure the um, the radius of a potential nut slot um, where your nut is going to be seated. When you replace it and and put in a new one, so this is really neat. Um, I have to read the manuals to know exactly how I how I operate this. But you can see here, just by turning that middle screw here, this one adjusts up, making clearance to this further part here that's sliding. This is going to sit 
on top of the fretboard and this part right here that has become uh, visible now is going to slide down in the nut slot so you can actually measure and see where um, where you're at and what radius gauge you need to use to match the um, the nut slot itself so that's great really handy and of course up here you're just going to adjust to make those um, those different slots attach here with those screws and on the back side so another great little jig here and um, I'm looking forward to to uh, reading a little bit about it and try to figure out how to to get the most out of it so that's just great and um, at least I have the instructions for it and just have some tools here to tighten the the screws and nuts with so again great it comes with everything you need here um, I just have to check over here to see that Oh, okay. I get this. Um, this is for setting the um, the individual spacing of your nut when you have located your outer e strings. So this right here, the first page, is for as you can see here four string configurations. So we have this little this little schedule here to see. The next page is five string. The uh, third page is six string, and the uh, last page is seven string. So you can basically make a ukulele or a bass, seven string guitar, six string guitar, anything like that. A mandolin, I believe, too. Um, yeah. So here you just have your basic um, table to look at. Um, basically just basically just using that template shown here to you know the uh, string spacing rule that a couple of companies are um, using or producing. Um, you basically just you mark the two outer E strings, and then you make the rest of this fit the um, um, the remaining four strings to make it match, so that the knot has been spaced out evenly. And um, yeah. There's a chart with a number down here, and I don't really know what they correspond to, but um, I have to look that up in the manual to see um, what exactly is going on there. But I have the manuals, and they will tell me um, everything about that. Um, Unijig guitar string spacing system. Instructions for use, yeah, and um, I just have to look look through those to get an idea of how exactly I can use those. Um, yeah, but I'll get to that and um, perhaps just make a little little update video to show you. Um, the little more knowledge they have hopefully gotten at that point. Um, but great, a lot of great tools here. Um, but we need one last thing here. Um, the big finale. And this right here, as I told you, this is the um, this is the fret press. And. Um, Let's have a look at
and you just see here everything has been packed and um, and just delivered um, very nicely from from GMC Luthier Tools. Um, I wouldn't worry about anything being damaged or scratched up, anything like that. Um, these guys take very good care and precautions to to make sure to pack everything in nice and nice and neatly. So let's just see what we got here. Got your instructions as always, and let's just get this fella out here, right there. Okay, so. You can also see a lot of rubber bands here holding everything into place. This is great. Um, let me just get this up here. So, guys, this is the fret press itself with adjustable sides here, depending on how much height or the other way around that you would need to make that particular guitar fit in. Um, and Basically, the fret is operated by this. Um, the press is operated by this handle that you turn to um, to sink it into. And um, again, you have some nice rubber on the bottom, and you actually have two sets of screws here on each side, so you can actually mount it to your um, work table, making it nice and sturdy. You know that you have the space to do the work. And um, yeah. And you can just tighten in these things here to make it adjustable to fit the guitar that you're working on. And down here, of course, you have the you have the actual nut that you would place the um, the fret press call in to match that particular fret radius that you're trying to achieve. And um, I believe that you're just just pulling pulling that little insert out here because it has a um, some form of lock when you when you put it up again, and um, that is just going to to make it seat in. And you're just going to insert the um, the calls that way. So right off the bat, it's just a very sturdy. I believe this. Uh, I believe it's aluminum, maybe, but very sturdy construction, um, and it looks great. Nothing cheap about this, definitely. Nothing cheap about this, and. Um, yeah, everything just looks really good, and that was also what I was looking for, and mostly what I fell for before I bought this. Um, it's just sturdy, and you know this is just going to last you a lifetime. Um, so that's basically what I look for in tools when I um, when I go to buy tools. So I'll just put that aside, and we'll just have a look at what else we've got in the package. Okay, so this right here is the actual uh, piece of protection for lifting the body up um, because you would have to have somewhat of an angle because your, your guitar is going to basically match the same height that the, uh, the neck is being put through here in the uh, fret press. So this has a um, rubber on the bottom so that it won't slip and rubber on the the top here so that the guitar body won't go anywhere and then you get these two thicknesses of extra rubber that you can place on top here just raising it up a little bit depending on if you need more height um, and that's really neat um, that's a great little piece to have just to get that body lifted up make sure that you don't put too much pressure on the neck um, just protecting, protecting everything when you're doing the work. Um, let's just put it in here again. I have to buy a bigger workbench to get all these tools to fit in there. Uh, but you can never have too many tools. Never have too many tools. Not at all. And this right here is the inserts for the um, different type of gauges so I showed you this on the the other fret press that I bought and this is just identical and um, ranging from seven and a quarter all the way up to flat so um, two four six eight there are nine calls here 
So, again, this, this package is just, it gives you everything you need to get started on your fret press or refretting a guitar. Um, so, again, for the price, it's just, I don't believe that you can beat this anywhere. And as I said, it's a company based based in um, in the UK. And since I live in the UK or in the EU, um, I um, I was looking for a um, an alternative to Stumac, and I found this, and this was just great. Um, so let's just get those in there again. And the little last piece here. These are the actual um, cork supports for the neck up here. So you can also lift it up that way, making sure that the neck is nicely supported and you have three different sizes here and shapes. So you can fit them under and make sure that both the the body down here is aligned and angled correctly, not causing any kink or uh, unevenness. And down up there at the neck, you can support it with these calls here. So again, another great thing to have. Um, so that's basically going to ensure that you're protecting anything when you're working on it. And um, yeah, this is just the instruction for that. Um, and this is called the Beam Fret Press for Set Neck Solid, solid Body Guitars. Um, so this is basically the fret press that you would want if you work on Gibson guitars or any style of, of set neck guitars. Um, because it just takes a lot more um, control or it allows you to work on that without damaging the neck. And um, yeah, you just get quite long Allen wrench here to adjust everything. And um, yeah, I guess that was it. <laughs> quite a lot of tools coming in today, but um, yeah, I'm quite happy with this and uh, I'm looking forward to using it. So um, yeah, a shout out to Gary at GMC Luthi Tools. Thanks for another package of great tools. Um, I'm so happy that I bought these tools and um, I hope to see a lot of great deals on the site as well but um, hopefully a lot of other people will look at this video and um, realize that GMC Luthier tools actually make quality tools and um, at a very reasonable price. So um, thanks for watching this guys and um, I'll probably be back soon in a couple of days with uh, with some videos on guitars and basically the normal stuff that I use. Um, right now I have my my pedal board underway as well. I'm just kind of going in between different patch cables to see what I need and um, if I'm happy with the cables that I bought and stuff like that. But I'll probably make a little update very soon. So um, thanks for watching again and um, feel free to comment, um, send me requests, ask questions, um, anything like that. I'll be happy to help you out. And um, yeah, behave yourself, guys. I'll see you soon.